as we get older, we probably think about it, but we maybe won't admit that it applies to us. The question is, if and when do we admit that we might not be able to continue driving? Now let's talk about that on today's Senior Insights. One of the hardest things to give up as we get older is our freedom of mobility and movement with our vehicles, our cars. But one of the major safety concerns of our family and children uh, is our well-being, uh, especially as we get older, our reaction time and our speed at mentally processing critical situations, that kind of decreases uh, with age. Because of this, driving can become a real health and safety concern for both you and the people around you, uh, the public even. I've told my two sons that I want them to listen to what I'm telling them right now. Uh, and if they determine that I'm being a safety hazard driving, I tell them to, they need to listen to what I'm saying right now because most likely when that time really comes and they feel like they need to make that choice and conversation, I have no doubt that I'll insist, oh, I can still handle this. I'm not ready. Don't do it now. We're not likely to readily agree knowing that our mobility will be forever impacted. Things will certainly be different when we can't drive, but we need to make it happen. Several years ago, I was driving behind a senior who might have been going maybe 10 miles an hour in a 45, 50 mile an hour speed zone. It was a four lane road, two going in our direction. It was in the town, so there were curbs on both sides. And their car was going so slow uh, from one side of the road and then over to the other side, rubbing the curbs. Traffic was, I was right behind them but traffic was backing up behind us all. And I was so anxious that there was gonna be somehow a serious injury or accident that even though I don't usually uh, do something about seniors, I did call 911 that day and reported this situation. And quickly, two police cars, two officers showed up, uh, arrived, and one of them even got out of the car as the driver was driving down the road so slow and kind of beating on the window of the car trying to get their attention. And the car was rubbing the curb on the right side of the road and then it made a left turn across all the traffic uh, to go down another road while the officer was riding, beating on the window. Uh, it was really uh, a, a strange and unusual situation, but so dangerous. I was afraid somebody would get run over on the sidewalk or there'd be a head-on collision like when they made that turn across traffic. I don't know what happened. Uh, last I saw was the guy beating on the window as he ran next to the car. But even though I don't know the outcome, I know that I don't want to be in a position of responsible uh, for a, maybe property damage or personal injury because I was driving when I should have already given it up. And I know you don't think you would want to do that either. When you, your family, uh, maybe an outside agency of some kind or, or friends or, or a doctor uh, determine that maybe you shouldn't be driving any longer, don't consider it uh, the end of the world or the loss of a right or a freedom. It's just simply a change that you're going to have to get used to. You can adapt to new ways of getting around, learn the different types. Some of them charge a little bit of a fee, uh, but there are different types of transportation available in most every community. Some are offered through a senior uh, care service of some sort. 
uh, maybe a, a health care service. Most stores now even have home deliveries where you can uh, call them or get on the computer and tell them what you want. They'll deliver it right to the door. Uh, it's so convenient, but it's so much safer than my driving when I shouldn't be. And dear ones, any fees that might be charged by these services would probably still be less than the upkeep, gas, insurance on a personal vehicle. You'll also have friends that are willing to provide transportation as you need it. Uh, I was blessed even today to be able to take a dear friend to a doctor appointment. Uh, he had had foot surgery and couldn't drive. Uh, you're simply just doing what's best for the health and safety of others as well as yourself. As much as we don't want to have to give up driving, we know that it's quite possible that the day may probably come when we have to do it. Again, tell your family to listen to what your wishes are, your position on it is right now, knowing that when they think it's time, we may not be thinking we're ready yet. We think we can still do it as we drive down the road when we shouldn't be. Uh, so don't argue that we can still do it safely. Tell them to make it happen when they determine it's time. We sure don't want to be a person that would injure somebody else when we shouldn't be driving. Talk to your family about this and do it soon. Even though we may think it's a way off, do it now so they know. And thanks again for listening to this video. We're only interested in your safety and well-being and that of those around us. Let us know your thoughts on this subject. As usual, that email will be at the end of this slide, this program. But thank you uh, for listening. And now, dear ones, for our weekly blessing. Oh, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Oh, the peace that can only be found in Christ Jesus. Dear ones, be safe. Be safe and uh, thank you for listening. This is Pastor Bob and I'm praying for you. God bless you.